Hi, Rob here again, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to add buttons and integrations to your Groove Pages website. So let's dive in and take a look. Okay, so we're picking up from where we left off. Um, we've got our template website here, so I'm just going to show you that as an example so that you can see how to bring buttons into your pages. So let's imagine this button here doesn't exist. So we're inside of Groove Pages. We've got our site open. I'm just going to delete this one. Now, recently, the button um, menu has changed the way the buttons are edited and configured. So I'm just going to show you how you bring in a button. You go to the Elements menu on the left-hand side. And under Buttons, you've got two options. You've got a text link, which I've covered in a previous video. that just gives you a piece of text that you can link out to a, another page or a URL and so on and so forth or you've got a solid button. So we're going to drag in solid button and you can see the button appears on the page. Now we need to configure it. Now, as you know, with a button, you can't just highlight the text. You need to go and do that inside the configure section of the editor menu on the right hand side. So I'm going to click on that and you can see button main label. That's the text. That field is the text that shows on the button. So if it was, uh, for instance, here, get your free ebook today, I could do um, download now. And then always remember, you must click update to make the change uh, take effect. So you'll see now that text over here on this button is going to change and it says download now. Then we can work on our, um, our design. I'll come back to this in a minute because this is where it's changed. But if we go back to the d design tab, you can then, under text, you can change the size of the text, which obviously the button grows with the size of the text. You can change the color of the text in here. So say if we wanted yellow text, and we can change the button color under background. So if I want a blue button, I can just click blue. There we go. And then we've also got the option of, if you wanted a rounded button or rounded corners, you'd go to border, select corners, uh, you could pick whichever option you prefer, various options down there. You can add borders, all those sort of things. If you want a little bit more space around the inside of a button, you could add some padding, either just top and bottom, or if you prefer, uh, all four together. Or maybe you just want the two sides, so you've got more, more room each side of the button. Now, let's go back to the uh, Configure menu. So I'm going to click on the Editor menu, go into the Configure tab. Now, if you want an icon on, the, um, on your button, you can now do it from here. You can choose to have a left icon, a right icon, or both. So let's say I want to have a download symbol on here. I can click, let's say I want one on the left, I'm going to click that. And now it gives me this, it gives me a search box where I can um, search for my icons, similar to we did um, earlier on in one of the other videos. So let's say I want a download icon. So let's pick this one here. Choose your icon size. So I'm going to pick 4XL. And the icon color, let's do that as, let's leave that as white. Remember to click update. And there we go. See, let's put that icon in there. And then you can choose the distance the icon is from the text. So if I change that to 20 pixels, click update, you'll see that the space here has grown between the two. See, the text and the um, the icon. So that's how this, this menu's changed here. You've also got the option to have a sub-label. So if I want to turn this icon off, I can update that. And if I want a sub-label, I can tick that box, click Update, and I'm going to get a second uh, text box inside the button called Sub-label. But now the difference is you edit that on the button itself. So the main button text you have to set in the, in the Configure menu up here, and the sub-label you can configure over here. Um, so let's see, Immediate Access. And let's say I want to change the size of that. I now go into the Design tab. I can change the text size and the text color and anything else I want to change about it, the font and so on and so forth in there. 
So that's that's nice and easy. So that's everything you need to know with buttons are in the configure menu. So you've got your icons, um, sub-label text, and also then in the design menu, you can set your colors and so on. Now, as I went through in a previous video, if you want to change the hover state of a button, you need to do it up here where it says states. And if you highlight hover, any changes you make in here now will happen when the cursor is over the button. So for example, if I change the background color of this button to green, when I hover over it now, it, it changes to green. So that is that part of it. I can turn that off again, turn off hover. Always remember to um, keep track of where you are on this so that you know what you've just done and what you're changing. Because if you still have hover selected and you go, you forget and you go off and make changes, um, it will make changes to a hover state, not to the, um, not to the normal state. So you need to be a little bit careful. Now, linking buttons. When you click on a button, so as long as the button is highlighted and it says button down here in the breadcrumbs and the editing menu will tell you at the top you're editing a button. When you go into here, you also get the link to option at the bottom and you can link to a page, a block. So that's a block on your page, a URL. So that's an external um, URL website. Uh, you can link to a pop up or to a blog or your groove cart. So in this example on this page, let's say we wanted to link to a block because the others are fairly self-explanatory. Um, let's say this block down here where you want to um, say this was a download access or something like that. So we could click on this block, click on block in the breadcrumbs so that we're on the block. And up here next to the block in the top of the editor menu, it's got a little pencil icon. I click on that and I can highlight and call this um, I could call this uh, the download block, for instance. Click the tick and that saves the name. Now, when I come up to that button, I can click the button, go into configure, and I can link to a block. So if I highlight block, and then I can choose, these are all the blocks that are on my page. Now, obviously, they're generically named. So the reason I went in and changed the name of that one is so that I can see it here. So if you want to know what the names of your blocks are, it's a good idea to go through and name them um, throughout the page so that you can link to them if you need to using the buttons. So I'm going to click on download and I'm going to do update. And then now, as soon as this button is clicked, it's going to um, direct you straight down to this block right at the bottom. So the page will appear like this obviously I can't I can preview it but the buttons don't work on a preview so it doesn't really it won't really demonstrate it particularly well but you would ordinarily you would click this and then the link when the buttons working because we can see preview mode takes off uh, links are disabled the page would appear right at the top this block would appear right at the top of your browser so it like this so it would take you straight to the form or your call to action or whatever that may be okay so that's the first type of button so a standard button and you can link to um, any kind of link within your site other links on your page like blocks on your page external urls and so on and so forth the other type of button is the one we've got down here and that is a form button so if you look at this form here this is a form container and that form container contains all of the details from your form. And now what a form does, that takes data from within it and it sends it and gets processed. So it collects that data. So for instance, the most obvious version of a form is um, like an email capture. So you'd capture someone's name, their email address. And in this case, we've got a message field as well. It captures that data and sends it on to a certain place where you can organize it or access it. So, to do that, you always have to have this within a uh, within a form. Now, I'm not going through setting up forms in this video. I've got another video on my channel where I go into that in detail of setting up a, a form and actually firing it off and making it work, connecting it with the integration. So uh, check out my YouTube channel for that if you want to see that one. But I'm, I'm showing you the buttons in this one. So if you want a button to fire a form, then you need to use in the elements menu, you need to use the other type of button, which is in the form section. And it's the submit button. 
And that's what we've got down here. And it's the same as the previous button. You just drag it in and you can see it's called form submit. Okay. So if you go into the uh, editor menu, you'll see at the top, it's called a form submit element or a form submit button. Now the way we can change those, it's very similar to the other buttons, the ordinary buttons. We go into the configure menu and then the button text, you change the text and you update when you want that change to happen. And the button action, usually you'll, you can use submit or uh, reset. Obviously, if someone's filling out a form, we want that to come up as submit so that it submits the form and it, it actually sends off that data. So they're the only options you get with the button. Now, the way it knows how to do um, or what to send within the form is you have these different fields, these uh, input fields within the form, and that's where the data gets captured. And then once uh, once that's all captured, that sends it off via your integration. So that's where we come on to integrations now. And the, by the way, the styling for these um, submit buttons is exactly the same as the others. Uh, you can choose the background colors. So in here, you just change the color. Uh, the text is changed here, the text color. So you can do all of those things from here. Um, but when we're coming in to set up integrations, we need an integration to be able to actually process that data so the way we do that where you find integrations is anywhere in your groove account you have your little avatar icon here you click on here and you go to my integrations and when you click on that these are some i've already got set up you get a different you if you've got none set up you'll get a different screen you have no you'll have a blank screen here so if you want to create an integration and add an integration into your site into your groove pages site you click add and then it'll ask you what type of integration you want to add. And you get all these different options. So you've got um, obviously the uh, email marketing options. So you've got Active Campaign, Aweber. Um, then you've got things like Get Response, MailChimp. Um, then you've got some uh, Zapier, which is a good one. I think you can see I use that one here. That's where you can say if it picks up a certain um, a certain trigger, then it needs to do this. And you can actually get things to automate much better. So you choose which one you want. So let's just pick a basic one. Let's say Aweber. You give it a description. So you might say um, new integration. You'd actually give it a name you can recognize, one, is one that you're going to use. And then you get this option here. Please click to authorize your Aweber account. And then when you click that, it will take you, it'll open a new uh, tab and it will take you through to Aweber and you can sign into your Aweber account and then um, follow the instructions there which will tie up Groove with your um, Aweber account. Now the same applies with these others. So say if you've got uh, MailChimp, you would do the same thing. They work via an API key. So if you go to MailChimp into your MailChimp account, you'll get provided with an API key. You put that key in here and that's what meshes the two together so that your Groove account and your MailChimp account can talk to each other. So once you've done that, you click update and then that new integration will be in here. I'm just going to exit here. And then when you come into the form and you make sure the form container is selected, you go up to the configure menu. You can choose the form action is going to be an integration. And from the integrations menu, you can then choose the integration that you've just created in that previous window. And then you click update and then that form and anything within it is going to only deal with that integration that you have set up. So that's about it. So now you know how to add buttons, how to link them through to things on your pages and external URLs as well. And you know the two types of buttons. You've got ordinary buttons and you've got form submit buttons. And you also know how to create an integration and how to uh, apply that to a form so that when you put your form submit buttons in there, they will work. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.